this little piece of cardboard was in a, a calendar that I bought at Mardell's. It was a Billy Graham calendar for the new year 2018 I gave to Debbie. And when I opened it up to put it in place, this fell out of it. And uh, it's a message from Dayspring co-founder Roy Lesson. And uh, we hope it will encourage you today. And it says, just think, you're not here by chance, but by God's choosing. His hand formed you and made you. His hand formed you and made you the person you are. He compares you to no one else. You are one of a kind. You lack nothing that His grace can't give you. He has allowed you to be here at this time in history to fulfill His special purpose for this generation. And he put a scripture on here, Ecclesiastes 3.1, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Mm -hmm. And we're in that time. And we're that generation. And we're the people that God put, put here. Mm -hmm. To fulfill mm -hmm. his special purpose. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I that cool. That's good. Yep. It's amazing. Little old us, huh? Well, God doesn't look at it like we look at it, you know? Just like when he went looking for David. You know, Samuel went looking for David, you know? And God doesn't look on, He looks on the heart. So tonight, we're going to talk about the end times. Because we're in the end times. So let's talk about the time we're in. Go to 2 Timothy 3. We'll get right to the real fun stuff. You notice how fun it is? <laughs> well, actually, it is fun. It can be exciting in the Lord. The world really needs a Savior, and they need to get their eyes open. And the judgments will do that. It will get people's eyes open. So, but if you're wondering, why is everything like it is? Well, we're in the end times. And it was prophesied that it would be this way. You know, you would think after Jesus came, everything would just get better and better and better. Well, not really. You know, the devil didn't go away yet. But there's a time, like it says there, there's a time for everything, right? And this is that time. 2 Timothy 3, 1. But understand this, that in the last Days. That's where we are. Will come perilous times of great stress and trouble. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. See, you wonder, why is it happening like this? This world is going bonkers. Well, it's prophesied. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous boasters, right? The, the, the top 1% in the world now own 50% of the world's wealth. Wow, that is incredible, you know? But you know what? It ain't great for them says, he who desires to be rich will uh, something like pierce himself through with many acute pangs. It's a tough life trying to be rich. You know, it ain't fun. It's just, you know, what it is. They will be abusive and disobedient to parents, ungrateful and unholy and profane without Natural human affection, relentless, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement, false accusers and troublemakers, intemperate, loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. 
Man, you look on the internet, on any of the social platforms, oh, yay, yay. I mean, it's like, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Well, you know, it, it is that, without natural human affection, you know? It's like when you're out on the highway. You wouldn't talk to people face to face like that, but on the highway, you know. But face to face, you, oh, pardon me. <laughs> they will be treacherous and rash, inflated with self conceit, lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements, more than and rather than lovers of God. And although they hold a form of piety, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Avoid such people. But no, he doesn't say go to their churches and try to change them. It says avoid them. And the reason I'm bringing these scriptures up here tonight, because we're going to talk more about artificial intelligence and the 5G networks that they want to set up to uh, connect everybody to the hive mind, right? And this here, this scripture, to me, this set of scriptures will become more and more relevant as that time goes on. Uh, go to 1 Thessalonians 5. We'll leave that out about the worming their way into homes because we've talked about that many times. But what do we do about it? You know, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So what do we just go off and uh, make ourselves a monastery? No, we're salt and light. We're supposed to be sprinkled, right? Right? <laughs> Look at verse 6. Accordingly then, let us not sleep as the rest do. But let us keep wide awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard. And let us be sober, calm, collected, and circumspect. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to know what's going on. We're not supposed to be uh, just, just go off and hide from the world. No, we're supposed to know what's going on. You know, the spiritual man tries all things. He can read the meaning of everything, right? Because he has the mind of Christ. He has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can talk to you about any subject. He knows all about it, right? Go to Daniel 12. Um, this whole thing about the artificial intelligence and... Um, the abomination of desolation, which is the pinnacle of artificial intelligence, will have a religious pseudo-spiritual aspect to it, or spiritual aspect to it. Big time, not just a little bit, big time, major deception. But in Daniel 12, verse 9, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed, Till the time of the end, so it's sealed until now. And that's why we get this, because now it's unsealed and we're getting clarity, right? It's being made clear. Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be tried, smelted, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the teachers and those who are wise shall understand. They shall understand. Right? Because we're staying awake. We're wide awake. We're looking. We're understanding. Right? Teachers and those who are wise shall understand. Go to Matthew 24. You know, if you... You know, 30, 30 years ago or more, you know, I mean, we were, we here at the church, pretty much, the way we 
stayed awake and watched was we basically watched politics, right, on the television. You know, Fox News came along and, you know, kind of opened up that world. And then the whole uh, Christian coalition and the Christian right wing thing, moral majority moved in and we got suckered into that as, as uh, a church, as believers. We got suckered into, oh, well, this one's good, and oh, that, they're bad. Well, you know what? They're all bad, because it's the world. It's just the world. Should we not look? No, we should look. We should understand what's going on. Well, we shouldn't put our hope in Washington, D.C., and those people. That's not our hope. That's not where we put that. And if you... If, if you follow, if you, if you, when they dangle that carrot, you know, and then, oh, we're just, we're, you know, we're for the Christians and everything. No, they're not. They're for what makes money and what gets them into power. And they'll do anything to do it, including deceive Christians. And they deceived them by the multiplied millions during the 80s and 90s, right? And they're still trying to do it today. And man, what suckers we were. But we learned a lesson. You know, we learned, we learned that, hey, no, that's the world and we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And so we don't, we don't have to just be uh, limited to uh, what the political pundits are saying. You know, no, we, can, we have delved deeper. And with the advent of the internet, it has really opened up you know, what you could usually, used to only get in, in, you know, paperback books about, you know, Tavistock or the Rand Corporation or, you know, what, the Illuminati or the Council of 300 or any, the Rothschilds or anything like that is now available at the click of a mouse to everybody. And we should avail ourselves and understand it. You know, the first time... For instance, I began to, I think Ray gave me a book about the Tavistock Institute. What was his name? Daniel Estulin. I think that's his name. I did a great job on the Tavistock Institute of Human Resources. And I think they, they were kind of, they kind of came about in uh, 1913. The dates vary, but I think it was 1913. And basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, Institute totally funded by the Rothschilds in Great Britain, probably in London, and they are uh, basically what they do is they mind control the populations of the world. If they want to get into a war and they want you involved in it, uh, you know they're going to paint the Japanese or the Germans or the um, the Middle Easterners as rats, you know, and they bring it through their totally bought and paid for media and they get into the minds of, as they did in World War I and World War II, Americans and they uh, manipulate the populations into accepting uh, going to war for them so they can make loads of cash. And the longer they're in war, the more money they make. I mean, look at the war in the Middle East. We've been there since, what, 2002? The longest fought war in American history. And it's just, it's just a cash machine. And this is how the world works. And this is how it all goes round and round. And all those politicians and all those people up there, they're just bought and paid for. You know, it's a big money-making system right? But in Matthew 24, when, Jesus, when they were asking Jesus, you know, when's the coming of the end in verse 3 and the end of the age? And he said, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. See, that's what happened to us when we fell for the whole moral majority thing. Deceiving and leading into error, Right? I mean, uh, we, we had a, I think it was an Uber driver the other day. 
that picked us up, and uh, we were talking to him, and you know, we asked him, you know, what's your name? His name was Saeed, wasn't it? Where are you from? Iraq. Oh, really? What town? Baghdad. Oh, no kidding. Well, that's been pretty rough over there for you, hadn't it? And we said, we just want you to know we love you. And he just, well, thank you. And we pulled in the church parking lot, and uh, he said, hey, would you all remember me in your prayers? I have a wife and five children. He's driving for Uber, and he's over here from Iraq. Do you, I, I have anything against those people? No, he's just a guy. He's a regular guy. Hey, he, wasn't, he didn't get to be born here in the United States, Christian America. He was born in an Islamic nation. It's not his fault, you know? So we should love him. We should love him. And I've prayed for him. I believe the Lord's going to get him born again and all his family, right? That was a divine appointment, I believe. But look, the, these institutes like Tavistock and Rand and all of them, they divide everybody. They pit everybody again. Do you have anything against Russian people? I don't. I, they're trying to live just like me. They're, they're just like us. They put their pants on and they go to work every day. It's interesting how the Russian people said, wow, at least you know, over here in Russia, we know we're being propagandized. <laughs> we're the most propagandized country in the world. I guarantee you we are, and it's slick too, probably the slickest propaganda. Over there, it's obvious probably. Over here, it's slick. You know, they had a 90 years of Edward Bernays, or 70 or 80 years of him, you know. He was the master of mind control. Four out of five dentists surveyed recommend fluoride right that was him fluoride sodium fluoride a known poison wow hey let's dump it in the drinking water too wow look at verse 24 for false Christ and false prophets will arise and they will show great signs and wonders so as to deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See what I'm telling you? Why we have to keep awake and watch? Why we should know what's going on? We should study? You know, I was telling you, the first time I read about Tavistock, and then I watched several videos on the Tavistock Institute. You know, when you're first gathering the information, it's like, Wow, wow, is this real? Is this, did this, all this really happen? Well, then after you watch, you know, maybe five or ten hours of it, and you, you leave it, and then you come back a few months later, and you revisit it, it's like, oh, of course that's what it is, you know, because it just be, it, the Lord puts it in order for you. He gives you wisdom about it. He gives you clarity about it, Right? And then you get a little bit more understanding of what is happening to our world. And it's fixing to go on steroids. We hadn't seen anything yet. Uh, Proverbs 16. Let's get into the meat of this. Because artificial intelligence um, it started way back there, believe it or not. The devil started it all. It actually, well, we'll get into it here. I hope I got this right. I don't. Oh, <laughs> helps if I go to Proverbs and not Psalm. Okay, Proverbs sixteen twenty-five. There's a way that seems right to a man and it appears straight before him. But at the end of it, it is the way of death. All right? Well, that happens with every individual in every generation since Adam and Eve, right? Since they fell. 
But what we're seeing now is the culmination of it. Now we're seeing it on a big old macro worldwide scale. Artificial intelligence is a way that appears right unto man, but the end of it is death. Right? Go to Romans chapter 8. You've been there before a few times. Yeah. Yeah, it is the curse. Zechariah 5. You see, all of this artificial intelligence and all this, you know, the, the social platforms and, and all the internet network, it's all the mind of the flesh. Yeah, yeah, there's good stuff on there that you can get off the internet. We do it all the time. And I really like Bible Gateway. You know, great technology used for a good reason. You know, because I can just get the scripture, the Holy Spirit will give me the scripture and I can just type in a couple of words and yeah, there it is. And then I usually say, I knew that. Romans 8, 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its own holy desire set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. Right? That is what all this is. The, the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's the mind of the flesh. Right? Right? It started way back then. The biggest technology they had at the tower was Babel, was make a block of brick or stone and put uh, tar around it, you know, bitumen. That was the high technology. Today, it's off the charts in every direction. And artificial intelligence will speed it up you know, you, you, you watch these, these scientists and these promoters of AI and 5G and virtual reality, you know, and they're just, they're like kids in the candy store. They're excited about it. And a lot of them are just their promoters. They're salesmen. And it's like the, this is going to be the next thing, greatest thing to hit the, the world, right? And you're going to have to be on it. Because if you don't get on it, you're going to be left behind. You, you won't be able to compete, right? You, you know, they're saying, you know, the human mind, it, it, you know, this is all these scientists. It won't, it'll take thousands of years for it to evolve to this level. And we can just speed it up with computers, right? And we can get everybody on the system. And whatever knowledge you need, it'll be at your fingertips. Ah, but those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Spirit. The, now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, is hostile to God. It does not it submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Do you see the uh, do you see the coming conflict between the sons of God and this whole system of uh, that they're bringing out? It's hostile to God. If it's hostile to God, guess what? It's going to be hostile to God's people, right? The persecution will come. Of course, you know, Jesus said, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you a mouth in such utterance as all your foes combined will not be able to refute, right? And there will be a time for that, a time to bear testimony. And, um, but see, this mind of the flesh, it ends in death. That's what it, this is, this is why he put the flaming swords outside of the Garden of Eden and wouldn't let them back in in that fallen state to eat of the Tree of Life. And see, they're trying through science and technology to get immortality. 
is not going to work. It's going to end in death. Show you that in a minute. But see, the whole AI, you know, 5G network, you know, I guess we have 4G now. This is, you know, what is it, um, wireless. And, and what they're saying is instead of having these towers everywhere, these cell towers, that they'll have um, one to, between every two and ten homes, they'll have a device on the house or whatever. They're about like this big. I saw, I saw an interview where these guys, the, prom, the, the promoters of the new 5G technology, are speaking to Trump. And they're promoting it and they're telling him, you know, this is what we want to do. But, but Mr. Trump, all these little towns and cities all over the country, they're, they're stopping us. You know, they're not giving us the permits, you know. And, and he said, hey, we're going to take care of it, right? The businessmen of the earth, right? We're going to take care of it. Don't worry. And because we, as the United States of America, we have to be the first with 5G technology. Now, if, to give you an example, with, see, it, it has to do with speed you know, of the information moving, right? If they're going to have cars that, that are, are uh, what do you call them, remote control or whatever, right? Well, they can't be a fraction of a second late. A fraction of a second is maybe too much and you're going to hit a pole or hit another car. So the technology has to be where it's lightning fast. It, it's just instant. It's the only way it'll work. And, and, and that's just one small example but all of it being connected to all knowledge, right? Natural knowledge, all natural knowledge. It's like the all-knowing one is the net that is spread, right? And they're, they want to get everybody connected to it. And they probably don't like people, especially older people like us, because we're just not that knocked out about it. We got this. That, this that, that doesn't even compare to this. You know, and keep one of these, you know, with pages and everything. Don't depend on that stuff. We got this, and they're thinking, that ain't nothing, and they don't know. It's everything. It is the real wisdom. Uh, go to Daniel 9. You know, we kind of started way back, I think five years ago or more, maybe quite a bit more years ago, in this chapter, Daniel 9. It's kind of what opened up the whole end-time revelation for us, isn't it? Well, it is what, what opened it all up for us. Daniel 9.27, and he, the Antichrist, shall enter into a strong and firm covenant with the many for one week, seven years, right? Now, you know, that right there, we have learned, uh, shows us that we should not assume anything in the Word. We assumed that that was the 70th week of Israel, right? We assumed that. Why would the he, the Antichrist, be involved with the 70th week of Israel? Oh, well, because he's a Jew and, you know, he's going to bring a peace treaty. Well, where does it say that? You know, a lot of people in end time prophecy say that. And maybe he will be. I don't know. I honestly don't care that much about who he is. I, I don't worry about it. I know he's going to be there and it'll be what it is. But... He shall enter into a strong, firm covenant with many for one week. You might want to pan out here, Ellen. We have found that, that that's not Daniel's 70th week. It comes three and a half years before Daniel's 70th week even begins, right? So we should be super careful on how we read the Word and make sure to listen to the Holy Spirit so that we don't follow these rabbit trails. 
And in the midst of the wheat, he shall cause the sacrifice and offering to the cease. The midst of the covenant week, not Daniel's 70th week, right? In the midst of it, he cuts off the sacrifice as they build the temple, right? Likely 600 feet from the temple mount or whatever it is, a few hundred feet. And upon the wing or pinnacle of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the full determined end is poured out on the desolator. Well, we have learned that that word desolate doesn't mean a desert, right? A dry place. It means to stun or stupefy, to astonish, make groggy, make stupid. Right? That's really what it means. The abomination of desolation, way down here in the end, right? Which is really halfway through Daniel's 70th week, but it's the end of the Antichrist week. The abomination of desolation is the pinnacle, the pinnacle of abomination, right? It's the pinnacle of of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good evil, good and evil, of what they've used for that. And it will be artificial intelligence. Um, go to Revelation 13. Show you something here. I'll show you that it's not just computers. It's much more than that. It's spiritual. It's a, it's a spiritual thing. Nasty. The devil's nasty. He is nasty. Revelation 13, 11, Then I saw another beast rising up out of the land. He had two horns like a lamb. He spoke like a dragon. Right? Horns like a lamb. He's nice and sweet. Speaks like a dragon. The serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field, right? Mm. Yeah. Yet, see, this is the thing. You listen to these people at TED Talk and all these people in artificial intelligence. Man, I mean, they lather it on. Oh, this is going to be just wonderful. Well, the reason all these cities are not giving these permits is because there are people in the medical realm all over the world saying this produces tumors, it produces cancer, the radiation is way too high. It's already happening with 3G and 4G. 5G will be off the charts, right? But no, we got to make money. Spoke like a dragon. He exerts all power and right and control of the former beast in his present and causes the earth and those who dwell upon it to exalt and deify the Antichrist, the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and to worship him. And he performs great signs, even making fire fall from the sky to the earth, men's sight. See, it's a spiritual thing, right? He performed, uh, let's see, and because of the signs which he's allowed to perform in the presence of the beast, he deceives those who inhabit the earth, deceives, be careful that no one deceives you, right? Commanding them to erect a statue in the likeness of the beast who is wounded by the small sword and still lives. Okay, now listen to this. And he is permitted to impart the breath of life into the beast's image so that the statue of the beast could actually talk and cause to be put to death those who would not bow down and worship the image of the beast. Okay? This is where it gets spiritual. Okay, it's computers or a robot, right? But it's highly advanced and the devil enters into it. It's deception. If you look in Revelation chapter 16, you see frogs coming from the mouth of the false prophet. 
from the Antichrist and from the dragon. And it says, these are they who perform signs and wonders, right? Well, Satan and his dominions, they enter into this thing, right? That's why it stupefies the world. Wow, technology coming alive, you know? And they're stunned, they're stupefied, they're astonished. Right? I mean, this is going to be a big deal. A big deal. And, you know, let's read on. He compels all small and great. He compels them, see? Hey, come on, man. You got to get on with this. Like I say, for us, I can take it or leave it. Right? But for young people coming up who are have just been schooled in computers and it's just a part of their life, much easier sell. You can see that. He compels all, both great and small, both rich and poor, free and slave, to be marked with inscription on the right hands and on their foreheads, or uh, so that no one will have the power to buy and sell unless he bears the stamp, the name of the beast, the number of the name. Right? Wow. You can't compete unless you get on this thing. Right? I mean, it's going to be sold to you. He compels them. Here's room for discernment. Let him who has intelligence calculate the number of the beast. For it's a human number. His number is 666. Look at Revelation 16. Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple sanctuary saying to the seven angels, go and empty out on the earth the seven bowls of God's wrath. So the first angel went and emptied his bowl on the earth and foul and painful ulcers came on the people who were marked with the stamp of the beast and who did homage to his image. Right? There you go. The end thereof is death. There's a way that seems right. It just seems right. I mean, listen to these guys. You know, this is, this is high technology. This is where the world's going. It's the new age. It's a counterfeit. Just like the Antichrist covenant is a counterfeit to Daniel's 70th week. This is a counterfeit to the new age that Jesus is bringing. I'm telling you, this is monumental. We live in monumental times. Jesus is bringing in the new age. But theirs is a cultic. That's why it's, it has all the signs and wonders with it. Look at Daniel 3. You know, like he said there in uh, Matthew 24. Read it while you're going over there. False Christ and false prophets will arise. They will show great signs and wonders. So as to deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Why wouldn't we want to know? You surely would. But here in Daniel 3... You know, it's the, the, it's the precursor or the type and shadow of the coming statue being set up, you know, nine times in the first 18 voices, verses it says set up when it's talking about the statue. But in verse 16, he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O king, Nebuchadnezzar, it's not necessary for us to answer you on this point. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. See? That will be... That will happen again. 
they, they, and they will not worship the image which the Antichrist will set up. And they will not be a part of it. You can't be. You have to come out of it. It's the god or idol of science and technology. You know, like I say, back in the time in the Tower of Babel, that was only the beginning of what they would do. Only the beginning. Now here we are. They're messing with the human genome and genome and DNA to try to get immortality. And these institutes like Tavistock and the Rand Corporation in America, they are mind controlling and selling the population on artificial intelligence. And it's just beginning. You know, before this year, you didn't see a lot of it on the internet. But this year is his experience loaded on the internet, artificial technology, uh, virtual reality, uh, robotics, robots. I mean, I'm not talking about robots at General Motors. I'm talking about robots that are in your house, right? That you're commingling with. And see, the society, um, demands instant gratification. This is, this is what's driving this whole thing. Everything has to be instant gratification. We thought fast food was something. Well, the best diet you can ever do is don't buy anything out of a window. That's one of the best diets you can have. Sometimes I do when I get in a pinch. <laughs> but um, fast food, that's nothing. Now with the internet and with this 5G technology, everything will be instant, and it's instant gratification. And see, God didn't call us to anything like that. He called us to be patient. We'll get into that in a minute. Because there are things that happen when you hope for something, when you have to wait for something. You know, when... We, I remember when I was like 10 years old, you know, you know, Mom, you know, I, don't, I need to make some money. I want to make some money. So she, well, you can sell these seeds, you know. They used to sell vegetable and flower seeds and stuff. So we'd go around the block and sell these seeds, and they'd have a catalog, and if you sold so many, you know, you'd get a, I want a sleeping bag, right? Man, I dreamed about that sleeping bag for weeks. A simple little sleeping bag that any kid today, they get it today. You know, you could order it on Amazon and be here this afternoon almost, or tomorrow at the latest. But I dreamed about that sleeping bag and going camping and how I was going to set up my camp and all that stuff. Well, you know, that's a good thing to have to wait. Um, but go to Daniel 12 again. This is weird. I'm not sure. It, we'll, we'll just read this. You, you can ponder this. We'll see what the Holy Spirit says about this. Verse 3, the teachers and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. See, that's what everybody's looking for. You know, everybody in the world, I mean, the rankest sinners, they know that they're bound to the, these bodies of pain, you know, and eventual death. And uh, they're trying to get around it. They're trying everything they can think of to get around it. And they have every laboratory in the world working on it. I mean, even to the point where they'll implant chips in your brain to cure your ailments. Or to have you be a piano player or whatever. You know? But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time in the end. Many shall run to and fro and search anxiously 
and knowledge shall increase and become great. Now, I always read this as, you know, we're in the end times, so many are going to run to and fro and search anxiously because they know we're in the end times, so they're going to look in the Bible. And I think that's true. But could this also mean this knowledge shall increase and become great, that they're running to and fro? I mean, it's a frantic society. Have you noticed? Uh, and with 5G technology and artificial intelligence, the, the uh, knowledge will be instantaneous. Just instantaneous. Anything you want to know. And it says, many shall run to and fro. Okay, go to Job chapter 2. You thought about this before, Ray? Job 2. This is interesting. See, because the devil needs mankind to carry out his will. And he gives man the imagination, and not only that, but probably fallen angels have given man technology. In fact, AI and 5G and all this may be fallen angel technology given to men. It may be. It's very possible. And again, there was a day when the sons of God, the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, the accuser, who came among them to present himself to the Lord, you know, and the Lord said to Satan, where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. Satan is not omnipresent, but he's using 5G AI technology to get as close to that as he can get. You know how we talked about in Habakkuk chapter 1, Lord, why do you uh, uh, bring up men, you know, like the fish of the sea in a net, right? Why do you let the enemy do that? Well, now we have the World Wide Web, right? The Internet. This Internet is, you know, Satan's walking to and fro, right? Well, now with this whole system of the internet in place, he's come as close to um, omnipresence as technology will get him, right? And everybody is walking to and fro, okay, on the earth. And they're not of God. So the... The sinfulness of man will just explode on the earth because now it's all interconnected with this hive mind and with this all-knowing one, right? And he's going to stupefy the world. That's the judgment on the world. It's a judgment. That's why people... No natural human affection, uh, affection right? Is because they, they get addicted to instant gratification because instant gratification releases dopamine in your body and you become addicted to it. You just get addicted to being instantly gratified. You don't have to wait for anything. So we've got a bunch of dopes in the world. They're all doped constantly. And so all they think about is self and self-gratification. That's what this, that's what happened when they ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is the, re, the pinnacle of that. That's the pinnacle. And that's where it's going. That's the judgment that it brings. Revelation 18.
I think it's going to get really nasty, really testy. Revelation 18.3, for all nations have drunk the wine of her passionate unchastity, right? That instant gratification. The rulers and leaders of the earth have joined with her in committing idolatry. The businessmen of the earth have become rich with the wealth of her excessive luxury and wantonness. See, instant gratification brings wantonness. You can never get enough, and it's never fast enough, and you're impatient, you know? Whereas I waited for weeks for that sleeping bag. That was a good thing. You could dream about it. Heck, the dream was as good as getting it. It's even better, actually. The dream was better than the reality. The reality was we went camping and somebody kicked over the kerosene tank and it fell into the fire and it burned and we're all throwing dirt on it and it was scary. Uh, and then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, so that you may not share in her sins, neither participate in her plagues. He's saying, come out of it. Come out of it, right? Don't involve yourself in it. Get out of it. How do you do that? I don't know. But I believe the Holy Spirit will show us. He'll show us how to do it. But they're going to bring it. It is coming. These guys are going to Trump in the White House, and they're pitching him, and he's going, we'll get it done. Don't worry about it. We're going to get it done. America will be first. Whoever gets there first, see, that's the thing they're worried about because they know that China and Russia and Europe and all of them, that they can get the technology too. So now whoever gets there first can get the lion's share of the, the booty, right? Sorry, that's the word that came to me, booty. But Matthew 6, come out from among them. You know, they dangle the carrot. That's the thing. They try to seduce you. You know, it's the dragon. He speaks like a dragon. Matthew 6. And, you know, just like with Bitcoin or, you know, any of those. And look, that won't be the last one. There will be more like Bitcoin. There will be a cashless society, Right? And uh, that's how they dangle the carrot to, to get you into it. Because you think, man, I, you know, I can make a lot of money. You know, and, and good people like Tom, who understands these things, he's like, you know, I could pay off things. I could help friends out. We could support ministries. You know, I, I mean, you get it. I mean, that, that's legitimate. That's okay. But see, they're trying to get you in it through that. Matthew 6, 31. So do not worry and be anxious, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? For the Gentiles wish for, or the heathen wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them, right? But seek first of all the kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these things taken together would be given to you besides. Right? We have to live that kind of faith walk, that kind of faith life. Because they're going to tell us, you can't survive without doing this. You have to be involved in this. You won't even have anything to eat. Well, he's saying your heavenly father knows that you need it. We just hadn't come up against that yet, have we? 2 Thessalonians 2. It all boils down to that, you know. It's it's survival. You know, and God's saying, look, I'm going to take care of you. And the world is going, you better get all you can and can all you get. 
2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9, the coming of the lawless one will, is through the activity and working of Satan will be tended with great power and with all sorts of miracles and signs and delusive marvels, lying wonders, even to the statue, breathing and talking. Right? And see, it isn't just going to be in the statue. He's going to enter into that. Everybody's connected to it, see, by this time. They're connected to it. They're worshiping it. They're getting all their needs met through this thing. It's a lying wonder. That's what I'm telling you. It's, it's going to be a spiritual thing. By unlimited seduction to evil. See, that's the internet. It's unlimited seduction to evil. And it'll get a lot worse. All wicked deception to those who are perishing. Because they did not welcome the truth but refuse to love it that they might be saved. How are you going to be saved through that? Well, there's a way that seems right up to man, but the end thereof is death. But God has called us to be faith people and believe what he says, and he'll do what he says. Right? God sent upon them a misleading influence, a working of error and strong delusion to make them believe what's false in order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe the truth, but instead took place in unrighteousness. Look at verse 13. But we, brethren, beloved by the Lord, ought to and are obligated to give thanks Always to God for you, because God has chosen you from the beginning as his first fruits for salvation through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and your belief in the truth. See, it's the sanctifying work of the Spirit and our belief in the truth. What thus saith the Lord says, right? by the sanctifying work of the Spirit. It's God who does the sanctifying. You just submit to him, and he will get the sanctifying done. Uh, look at Luke chapter 8. This is, this is idolatry that, that they're bringing forth in the world. It is the pinnacle, the pinnacle of idolatry. You know, when, when Jesus was uh, teaching the parable about the seed along the road and the dry ground, and then those among the thorns, right? The seed being the word, Right? And those among the sorn, thorns, it was the cares and anxieties and the glamour and deceitfulness of riches and other things choke the word and it produces no fruit. But in verse 15, it says, But as for that seed in good soil, these are the people who, hearing the word, hold it fast in a just and worthy heart and steadily bring forth fruit with patience. See, this is the exact opposite of the world. The world is instant gratification. And God has called us to bring forth fruit with patience. You just have to stay with the program. You know, um, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. You bring forth fruit with patience, left, right, repeat. You just stay with the program. In due time, you shall reap, right? Uh, look at Revelation 3. It is diametrically opposed to what they think is the pinnacle of what they can do with science and technology. The mind of the flesh is hostile to God. 
It does not submit itself to God. Indeed, it cannot. Right? Revelation 3.10, because you have guarded and kept my word of patient endurance. Right? I will also keep you from the hour of trial which is coming on the world to try those who dwell upon the earth. See, patient endurance is what brings it about. Right here, they're kept from the hour of trial that's coming on the earth, right? The second half of the Antichrist covenant, the beginning of Daniel's 70th week, which is when the Antichrist and the false prophet rule coming to the pinnacle of abominations. And it'll be this whole electronic network set up that they'll have everybody worshiping. Just like Nebuchadnezzar had them bow at the statue. Right? And let's throw in some music there, because, you know, I mean, everywhere you go is music. Because music opens you up. Music can influence you greatly. You go to the grocery store. You get, get to listen to little James Taylor. I feel good, right? All that kind of stuff. Take your time. Ooh, ooh, let's get some of that. Next thing you know, you get this cart. Anyway, they do that for a reason. Whereas at the restaurant, it's just... Bang, 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 bang. You're going, well, they don't need to play this music. We can't even hear it. It's boom, boom. Well, they want you out. Hey, you done ordered. We want you out the door. Give us that table. We got to feed somebody else. Make the money, right? All kinds of music. And then they bowed. All kinds of music. You want to... You wanna, Read and understand an interesting thing about music. Get on the internet and find out why the rock music industry in the 1960s and 70s was brought about. It wasn't organic. It was a mass manipulation by the Tavistock Institute. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, it was all a huge mind control program. You should read it. It's super interesting. And why they did it. They're manipulating the masses of the world. It's amazing. Patient endurance. Keep you safe from the hour that's coming. Let's go one more scripture. Romans 8. Good one to end on. I would just say this. This whole thing that they're rolling out with 5G and AI and virtual reality and all this stuff, I would warn you, greatly warn you, this is Babylon and you should come out of it. Don't let them seduce you into this program. It, is, it reaches the pinnacle with the abomination of desolation. It's what it's all about. It's to capture your mind and make you a slave. And really, to be honest, they don't really want you. They'd rather get rid of you. There will be huge population reductions throughout this thing. And, they, and it's all planned. Verse 22, we know that the whole creation has been moaning together in pains of labor until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves too, who have and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of the blissful things to come. We groan inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies from sensuality in the grave which will reveal our manifestation as God's sons. For in this hope, we were saved. But hope, which is seen, is not hope. For how can one hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for it, 
For what is still unseen, we wait for it with patience and composure. You know, that's what it's going to take. We're going to have to be patient and stay composed and, and believe that God is going to get this thing done in us that he said he would do that the world and even the church world thinks we're crazy to think it. But it says it right there in plain English, right? And our job is to believe. That is our work, is to believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. You know, even when, when Joshua and Caleb and that group went into the land to scout it out and they came back and the, the majority of the group said, uh, you know, we're like grasshoppers. It was the Amorites in their sight. And they, they're giants. And Joshua and Caleb, hey, we're well able to take the land, right? And they were of a different spirit. And later in Hebrews, he said, they did not unite themselves in faith with Joshua and Caleb. Hey, if you don't see it just yet, unite yourself with people who do. Right? Unite yourself with them. And then you will eventually, it will happen for you. Because uniting yourself with people of like precious faith, you will hear it. And in hearing it, you will get faith. Right? Faith comes by hearing. Right? And you can come on into it. Yeah, it seems possible. I mean, he said of the rich man, right? About... Entering, he said, you know, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom than for a camel or a rope or whatever to go through the eye of a needle. But with God, all things are possible. God can save even the elite of the world. He wants to. He wants to save them, right? So, you know, if he wants to save them, we should be willing to do that, right? But God can do it. And we are a people of faith and we wait for it with patience and composure. We're going to have to because it's going to come when it's going to come, right? So thank you, Father, that you've called us for this time, this 